August issue of War Games Soldiers and Strategy magazine. Uh, it says, this issue is fighting in the graveyard of empires, war in Afghanistan, from Alexander to the Soviet Union. So, not sure why I got this yet. Normally, when I open it up, I can tell you what I saw at the store that made me get it. Usually, I like to get War Games Soldiers and Strategy just simply to see the articles and the advertisements that they have. So, as always, this issue is no difference. We have some Rubicon stuff. Unfortunately, this Rubicon ads, I don't think these ads have changed in two years. You could probably go back two years ago and you'd see the same vehicles and stuff being offered. You know, and as much as I love Rubicon's models, I very rarely buy them because they take so long to come out. And by the time they've come out, you've already sourced it from somewhere else. So this is talking about the, uh, these are some ads, some plastic Roman cataphracts, some U.S. Embassy Marines, those are interesting from uh, Gringo 40s, Baron's War, 100 Years War Flags, those could be interesting. So here is a Town of Liberty mat by Cigar Box Battle, $69.99. You have a third rate ship. We have some plastic Dark Age Irish and some World War II U.S. Airborne from Crusader. Some modern Spetsnauts, but they don't have any baklava. So that is showing you what they have on offer from Danger Close Miniature. Some 10 millimeter European Hamlets. Uh, the North Star is about to come out with their plastic Elven Light Infantry. And like I said, I don't mind showing you guys all of the advertisements because it obviously helps the advertisers, which is one of the reasons uh, War Game Soldiers and Strategy you know, puts this out. So I'm just helping to reach more. The articles and things I will kind of just flip through. So changing times and an invitation. Rick Priestley. So he has a lot of credits. I'm not sure what the article is about. Uh, I don't know what he's actually talking about. Uh, I think it sounds like he's talking about societies or gaming groups. So some more articles from Deep Cut. That's a pretty nice mat there. Although I don't know if that's their their old Frostgrave mat or a new one. So I don't know. It looks like they're advertising getting your own image on their mats. Which I may take them up on. The Lighthouse on Penzenskaya Street. Pavlo's House. So this looks like a World War II scenario. Yeah. So that might be fun to play. Some hidden setup. Bifrost miniatures. I never heard of them. So that's why I said I love getting this magazine because I always run into advertisers or vendors that I've never uh, heard of or haven't been aware of. He who charges rashly often fails. So that's a look at a battle fought in 1119 in Normandy. That's a medieval era. A crossroads campaign. So Henry Hyde is saying he needs to take a short break for health reasons. Uh, so what is this article about? Uh, woods, orchards, playing the campaign, movement. So this map shows a pinch point between slopes and all. So it looks like a World War II battle scenario. I hope Henry Hyde is doing okay. He says something about whilst being given a delicate atomic glow by the radiotherapist, 
I can work on my evil cackle as I imagine you wrestling not with mere scenarios, but with a full and fiendish mini campaign. So that's never good when they got to give you the chemo. But this is very detailed, very well laid out too. Look at all the map sections. So you might be coming in map one, two, three, four. You have encounter scenarios. Mm, so if you're going to take a hiatus, this is definitely a way to uh, fill up everybody's inbox before you go. So some caliber books. So the caliber reprint reprints a lot of uh, the early war games authors like Featherstone, C.S. Grant, Charles Grant, Afghanistan, the Graveyard of Empires. There's some articles there. The Land of Bones, Alexander the Great's campaign in Afghanistan. And bloodbath for the Biscuit Boys, 1880 Battle of Maywand, the Second Anglo-Afghan War. So yeah, this whole art, this whole issue is going to deal with conflicts in Afghanistan. I wish they would did a modern one. I don't see any kind of modern operations. I mean, I don't really consider the Soviet Union in Afghanistan modern anymore. Yeah, so I don't know, maybe there's some more. So we get some Frost, Fire Forge games, has some new things. These This stuff is hard to pick up, though. Fire Forge is not widely available, at least not in the U.S. War in Afghanistan during the Age of Jazz, the Magut Sabad incident, 1919. All right, let's make our way forward. The Cold War Soviet invasion of Afghanistan. The Zinky Boys. All right, let's keep going. You guys know what I want to get to. And then it looks like he stops. This is, I think, why I bought this issue, though, was because it had a whole list of manufacturers that sell uh, Afghanistan or Afghan type of figures, which, uh, for my Black Ops game, you know, I had been interested in seeing what was available. Now, some of these, as I look at them, are not in the period that uh, I'm doing right now. Okay, let's see what's on this page. So these are a little more modern. These are from Mongrel Miniatures. So it looks like he's got some type of anti-air missile. I mean, I guess if you're dealing with Afghans, their weapons are only going to be so modern, right? Bravery Against All Odds, The Battle of Kandahar, 1st September 1880. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. So, I don't know. There's not really a lot in this article for me. Slot together scenery. This might be interesting. Sons of Kazat, how to paint a Dwarven army in 28 millimeter. Unfortunately, I'm not really trying to paint any doors right now. Let's play Infamy Infamy. Now, I've heard a lot about this. This is one of the newest games out on the market. I've seen some playthroughs. It's kind of, I'm still kind of on the fence. There's a lot of cards involved and kind of random pop-up scenarios and things that I don't know it seems a little clunky to me but I haven't had a chance to play it in general I, I don't really do too many of two fat lardy's games like I don't really like chain of command and some of the other games they do but I don't know that might be something worth checking up on Wild West Exodus I didn't even know they were still making figures some game reviews Mortal McGlorium, H.G. Wells, Little Wars, Rangers of Shadow Deep Across the Waste, Blitzkrieg, Paint Stations, and that's pretty much an issue for you. And then there's a nice big spread here on Victory at Sea, which you get the uh, Battle for the Pacific, so this is $80. Uh... 
Which I mean, if this was, I'm assuming if this is playable by itself, maybe eighty dollars isn't bad. Ruse Warlord. So I mean, I guess maybe instead of buying the starter game, you could buy this if you just want to play War in the Pacific. But again, the ships are are quite limited. Like there's no aircraft carriers in this starting box. So you see here it says U.S. Navy Fleet. And you see an aircraft carrier, but how much is that one? Because I think each of these, oh wait, each of these are $128. So if you just wanted to play in the Pacific, right? You would have to buy the $80 Pacific box starter. And then you would have to buy the $128 U.S. Navy fleet to get aircraft carriers. So you're looking at $200. That's just, that's mind-blowing. I mean, that's absolutely mind-blowing. But, I mean, that's not what this is about today. This is just a flip-through of the July-August issue of War Game Soldiers and Strategy. Take care. God bless. Mm -hmm.